Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, we're going to be working with I squared C displays on the Raspberry Pi Pico from the Arduino IDE. <laughs> In the last video in the series, we covered the basics of I squared C on the Raspberry Pi Pico by designing a port scanner. In this video, we're going to set up a display to emulate the display of a VFO for a CB radio. VFO stands for Variable Frequency Oscillator. Eventually, I'm going to be making a VFO that will convert a 6-channel radio into a 40-channel radio. The display we are using is a generic version of the SSD1306. It is a 128 by 64 pixel display. Mine is on an odd address at 0x3c. Most of them are on the address of 0x3d. Now here we go into the code. The code begins by calling the wire library for I squared C. Next we call in the Adafruit library for the SSD1306. Now we define the address for our display. If you are not sure of the address of your display, use the port scanner from my previous video. Next we create an Adafruit SSD1306 object as display 1. We then pass it the screen width, height, the port information of I squared C, and the reset pin. We use negative 1 to indicate the reset pin is shared with the reset pin of the microcontroller. Next, we come to the variable we will use to indicate the current channel. Now we come to the logo. I created the logo as a JPEG and converted it into hex on a website I will list below in the description. My logo is 64 pixels tall and 88 pixels wide. The bitmap must be converted to hex format to be used with the library and compiled in with the code. We designate it to be stored in program memory so it does not waste precious RAM space. Next we come to setup where we first set the pins to be used for I squared C on the I squared C port 1. Now we initialize the display object. We tell the display object to power on the built in supply and we pass into the display object the address of the display. This is in an if not statement which will begin an infinite loop if the display cannot start. This will prevent the code from advancing if there is a problem with the display or a connection. Next we clear the buffer of the display and call our draw logo function. Then we delay for 3 seconds so the logo acts as a splash screen. Now we come to the loop. In the loop we call the display channel and frequency function. Next we increment the channel variable to emulate changing the channel. If the channel is greater than 40, it is returned to channel 1, like the channel selector on a normal CB radio. Next, we delay for a short duration before the loop repeats. Now we find the draw logo function. This function simply draws our logo on the screen. The first step is to clear the buffer with clear display. Now we tell the display to draw a bitmap. We tell it where we want the horizontal center of our graphic located with the logo width divided by 2 subtracted from the display width. We repeat the same math for the vertical position with height. Then we tell it the name of the bitmap followed by the horizontal and vertical size of the bitmap. Next we output the buffer to the display. Next we come to the display channel and frequency function. This function takes the channel number as an argument. Inside the function we create a string to hold the frequency. Then we come to a switch that sets the frequency string to the appropriate frequency based on the channel number. On a CB radio the frequencies are not all equally spaced because there are gaps for what we call RC channels. RC channels are designated for use by radio control devices. This is why we don't simply step through the frequencies. The next section of code is all formatting and outputting the channel and frequency to the display. First we clear the buffer. Next we set the text size. The lower the number, the smaller the text. Next we set the display color. This display only uses white as it is monochrome. Now we set the cursor to the top left point of the display, 0x, 0y. Now we print ch to represent channel. Now we set the cursor next to the ch at x30, y0. Now we print the channel number we passed into the function. Next we set the text size a bit smaller for the frequency display. Again we set the text color to white. Now we set the cursor position to 0x25y, the left side and just under the ch. Now we output the frequency string to the display. Now we set the cursor at 75x25y next to the frequency. Now we output mhz to represent megahertz. The CB radio band runs from 26.965 MHz 
to 27.405 MHz. Finally, we move the buffer to the display showing our text. In the next video in the series, we will be working with the SI5351 on I squared C bus to build an actual VFO. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.